on, you want to uh, review your notes uh, from the, especially the stuff from the textbook about how cameras operate. Additive and subtractive color mixing. Um, primary colors for video, what the percentages are for red, green, and blue to get white. Uh, all of those notes way back at the beginning uh, when we started talking about uh, the textbook's information for camera on. Uh, and how the cameras work, and also that led us into digitizing. So all the digital stuff, how do you, you know, how do you turn an analog signal into digital, and all that jazz. Now prior to that, in the first couple of weeks, as you probably recall, we talked about watts, volts, amps, and what makes electricity, which led us into cycles per second, frequency, and um, amplitude. I hope you're getting all this because everything I just said is a question on virtually everything I just said. Wait, what? That's why I said pay attention. <laughs> you know, it, this is a university. Tune in. So you want to make sure that you study all of those things very, very specific. That electrical handout and everything that goes with electricity, like cycles per second, like um, there will probably be several questions on the camera control unit itself. So you ought to know what the CCU does. Again, that's some information from the uh, textbook. Um, the one question on the midterm that everybody missed, I mean, virtually everybody missed, I think one person got it right. Uh, what do you call it when uh, you take information out of one circuit and then connect it to the next device? It's the same. Anybody remember? Daisy chain. Daisy chain. What's the other? What's the other term? It starts with a G. Close. Oh, no. Looping. Looping. <laughs> what is that? What? What about what? What was the question? What happens when you take a circuit and you run it through another piece of equipment and you continue on with that same circuit? So it's looping. Uh, I, I point that out because almost everybody got it wrong on the midterm. Uh, even though I demoed it for you the week before. If you guys are going to stay in the university situation, you need to learn to take notes. Yeah, I mean, when I was in graduate school, a professor would walk through the door and say, Good morning, class, and everybody wrote. Good morning, class. Every single thing. You know, you really need to write down stuff. And if you can't or you can't keep up with my speed, uh, then ask me to slow down. And if that doesn't work, then record me with an audio recorder. You, you've got a number of options here to get this stuff down. But get it down because it's going to be there. I'm, I'm virtually telling you what's going to be on the final. If you're not writing this stuff down unless you've got massive instant memory, you're going to fail the time. So, write it down. I mean, I keep talking and I see like four pens moving. Like this. <laughs> I, I, what more can I do for you? I don't know. I'm giving you, I'm giving you the questions and nobody's writing it down. Um, write it down. And that's overly generous. That isn't going to happen in most of your other classes. Okay, um, uh, let's see, another section of this is going to be, there's going to be a lot of stuff back to the original uh, Watts, Amps, Volts, and uh, that handout, several on that. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, different connectors and different wires, um, you know, the balance, unbalance, and all that, all that jazz. Um, What are the different connectors used for? Now we had that on a quiz and midterm, so uh, make sure you restudy that. Um, from the textbook, uh, make sure you understand the uh, aspect ratios and the formats. I hope you understand what I just said. Aspect ratio for standard television is what? Um, four, three. Standard TV set like that one back there. 16 by 9. No, no four, three. it's 4-3. Four, 4-3 four, was high def. 
16 by 9. Okay, what are the prevailing high def formats at the moment, not counting 4K? What are the 2K dominant formats? Well, when you go out and shoot with Irwin's field cameras, what are you feeling it at? 1080 what? I. It's usually 1080i. And what's the other one? 720p. 720p. Why is that so important for you to be thinking about the engineering class? <coughs> because you have to set that when you go to edit. So before you even get to the editing bay, you already have committed to one format or the other. You can't switch it in the editing bay. So if you shot on 720 and you want to edit on 1080i, too bad. That's why this stuff is important. <coughs> so, and if you don't even know what that is, how can you make a decision on one or the other? Yeah? Okay. Uh, some basic film questions. What's the uh, frames per second for video versus film? 30 and um, 60. Halfway there. 60. Uh, which is which? 30 is TV. Um, film. Film. Mm -hmm. film is higher. Film is 60, right? 100. 120. Film is 24 frames per second. Video is 30 frames per second. That and uh, you might want to remember that. Uh, Okay. Is it 30? Is it 30? Is it 30? What was it? Film and... Uh, video was 30. Was video was 30, huh? Wait, I want you yeah. to bring her off. Yeah. Now, no, can in actual you, truth, can you repeat video is not really 30. It's 29.97. But everybody says 30. It's, it's close enough for government work. Okay? What was that? That 3 tenths, uh, 3 one hundredths of a frame adds up over time, and you should know this from your camera class, when you go to edit that then, what's that called? After about five minutes, you get one full frame. Did you discuss this in camera? Wait, what was that? Drop frame versus non-drop frame editing. Does this ring a bell? No. No, you haven't gotten there yet. You'll get that in editing too, for sure. Uh, because it is 29.97, then those three one hundredths of a second, <coughs> add up, like I said, once every five minutes or so, you're going to drop one full frame. And so when you go to set up your editing equipment, you set it for drop frame or non-drop frame to account for that. It's like leap year. You account for it or you don't. Uh, you'll for sure get that in editing. That won't be on this test, but uh, certainly uh, frame rates will. Now, we got 30 frames per second, you said, for video. If it's interlaced, video, right, then how many fields per frame? 544. Fields per frame. 120? No, it's if one you're interlacing the odd field with the even field, it's how many fields are there? 120? Two. If you are interlacing oh. the odd field with the even field, how many fields? Fields are there. Two. 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 The odd field and the even field. I just gave you the answer. I was close. Remember we talked about this on the waveform vector scope about why there are two traces. Ah, uh, all right. Let's talk about sound for a second. If you are playing back sound and you turn down the volume, does that affect the signal? No. no. Nope. nope. What is the signal card called? Gain. 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 What is the ratio called of the bad stuff in an audio signal? Sound to noise. What? Sound to noise. Close. Dang it. You got right frequency. On the final. Signal. Um, Signal to noise ratio. Obviously, you want mostly signal and very little noise. The more expensive equipment, more expensive microphones, and so on, will help eliminate most of the noise. Cheap microphones have a lot of noise. 
expensive microphones don't. That's one of the reasons why they're expensive. They're using gold contacts inside a lot of other uh, page stuff. Okay. <sighs> Terminators. You know what the ohms rating is on an average video terminator and where you put it. <coughs> know your um, waveform forward and backward. I'm not going to ask you any questions on the vector scope because we haven't spent a lot of time studying this. But you better know the waveform. You better know, you know, zero line, your 7.5% line for your blacks, your 100% line for your whites, where your 80% line is for faces. You better, you better know that scope backwards and forwards. Um, and where everything is and how to get there. Uh, what about impedances? What do you measure impedance in? How's it marked? <coughs> How's it marked? High Z or low Z? You guys should be coming back with stuff like this. So your, your final is coming up immediately. Impedance. Yeah. Look in your notes. I know I taught it to you. Because high Z is garbage and low Z is perfect pro. Low is pro. for that day, I said that, that you know, if you ask somebody what's low Z to try and translate it, they, they couldn't actually really precisely tell you that. That's kind of a subjective thing. Uh, what's the percentage of red, green, and blue to get white? Colors in the visible white spectrum. Red, green, and blue. What? Purple. Cyan, Who's purple. Got somebody raise your hand and Red, green, and blue. And then there's there's yellow, cyan, Roy G. Biff. Magenta. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo. Roy G. Biff. It's the way everybody remembers it, by that name. Colors in the ring. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. What's above violet that you can't see? UV. Ultraviolet. That gives you a sunburn. Ultraviolet. Yeah. Ultraviolet. What's <laughs> below red that your infrared. dog can see but you can't? Infrared. 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 
that, that was the color, what was it? Pardon? Color spectrum? That's the that's visible light spectrum, yeah. which is just part of the big frequencies of, for everything. Name three sources of uh, radio frequency interference. Electricity. What? Electricity? Sunlight. The electrical circuits themselves. Yeah, you can Light. say that, although that's a bit of a cheat. Light. No. Clouds. Radio frequency. Uh, wireless. You know, this is the radio at home, and all of a sudden you hear a buzz. What causes that? Hair dryers, microwave ovens, coffee makers, fans, air conditioners, anything with an electrical motor, router, or any, no, definitely not a router. Anything with an electrical motor or anything that uses a lot of power, clothes dryer, your refrigerator. Any of those can generate enough of a field to interfere with radio frequency. In audio, how do you eliminate radio frequency experience? Balance. A balance line? A cord. A cord mic? Balance. Wire cord? Balance wire. A balanced wire. Yeah. A balance. You're saying it right. Balance. Have the confidence. You're, you're on a roll. You got it. It's a balanced line. Line, yeah. so now, how do you balance line? I mean, what's balance and balance line? There's a the ground. The, the problem is not the It's the cable. No. It's got an extra cable wrapped around it. Right. You got, you've got a positive signal going here, and not really a negative, but a negative signal going here. Wrapped with a ground. And what happens is the RF attacks both the positive and the negative with equal strength. And what comes in to the component subtracts whichever one is the greater, therefore canceling the whole thing out. That's why it's balanced. So you're balancing the positive against the negative. To get rid of something you don't really want. What do you call a gizmo of any kind that turns one form of energy into another form of energy? Transformer? Transducer. 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 What do you call it when uh, you are mixing together signals, mostly audio, but it can also happen on video, where when the signals get to the mix point, usually because one cable is longer or shorter than another, they don't arrive at the same exact point in time, and so you have an issue that needs fixing. What do you call that issue? Troubleshooting. Delay. 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 Delay is one way. Phasing. Phasing is the word you're looking for. Phasing. Is it term? Phasing. They're out of phase. They're out of phase. Remember, not only that explain that, but we also one watch video on it. gets there because of the wire faster than the other one. Okay, what connectors are used most often in professional production for the uh, video signals? BNC. What connector? BNC. BNC. What connector is used most often in professional production for uh, microphone cables and interfaces? XLRs. 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 Microphones. What kind of a microphone always requires a power source, either battery or phantom? Condenser. Condenser. What type of microphone never requires an external power source? Dynamic. What happens to your picture when the pedestal level is set too high? What's the picture look like? Sprite. Well, it's too bright. Yeah, I, I prefer another term. It adds too dark. 
Right. Over exposed. Well, Over what are we doing with that pedestal? Making it darker. We're turning up the what? Black. Black belt. We're black turning belt. up the black level. Black level. So if you put a lot more of that into a signal, it all goes black. Gray. Gray. Yeah. <laughs> if you turn it down, Girl, so crush the blacks Sounds to below 7.5. Turn down the pedestal. What's the picture look like? Green. You can't see any dynamic rank. You can't see any difference in the in the, the last three chips all look black. It eliminates the grays. So up too high, all you get is gray. Down too low, all you get is black. Iris. You open it up way too much, and what does the picture look like? Right, overexposed. It looks overexposed, but using the same notion, what does it just look like? White. White or light gray. What if you do the opposite and close the iris? The black. 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 talk about this, but this might pop up. Something from the book. Something you've all experienced. I think I better draw this for you. Can anybody define feedback? Um, it doesn't happen often in production because you're usually not using really high powered speakers. That when uh, Source of sound and it comes to it and it goes back in. Yes. It happens most often with microphones. It usually doesn't happen with tape recorders or uh, CDs or anything like that. It can, but you would have to have the sound turn up so loud that it would be ear shattering. It's possible. Well, it's I've like seen feedback uh, when DJs uh, really crank the sound and they, it's so loud that uh, the CD itself actually starts to vibrate. That's rare. I mean, it's, we're talking about like 140 decibels here. It's ridiculous. Okay, here's how it works. Microphone. Sound goes in. Moves the diagram up and down. That makes electricity. Small amount of electricity. That goes to a pre amp of some kind, either built into the board or a separate box. That goes to an amp, and out of the amp it goes to speaker. That squeal, that horrible squeal that you hear every time somebody gets up to do a speech. Or they, you know, they go up, step up to a podium, and, and, or a singer. Sometimes you've all experienced it because it happens to everybody who doesn't know what they're doing. What's happened is that this sound is coming in, going through the signal processing, but of course it's moving. Electrons are moving at the speed of light. It's very fast. It comes out of the speaker. Now, what's coming out of the speaker is sound pressure. If this microphone is anywhere near this, if your microphone is behind the speakers, your microphone is back here. What happens is this sound pressure information hits the microphone at the same time that the original source information hit the microphone, and what you get is an infinite loop. Feedback, in fact, is um, echo at infinite speed. If you could slow down feedback, what you would actually hear is echo. You can, of course. And so what happens is everything starts squealing, and the only way to stop that is to get the microphone away from the speakers. This is why if you go to a concert, the stage monitors, 
are always pointing toward the talent rather than the other way around. Because if that gets into the loop, then it will start echoing, echoing faster, faster, faster to infinity. And when you hit infinity, then you get feedback. So what's the answer to feedback? Move the speakers or move the microphones away from each other. It will really cause you all kinds of problems. Um, in the control room, for example, when we go in there, and sometimes I'm wearing a microphone to demonstrate something, you hear the feedback. That feedback is coming from the two speakers in the control room. So as soon as I get close to them, you'll start hearing that squeal. As soon as I walk away from them or we turn them down, the squeal instantly goes away. The squeal is an infinity speed echo caused by the original sound and the amplified sound both going through the system at the same time. Feedback comes back on. What would be another answer to this? Let's say that you've got a typical stage set up. And you have stacks and stacks and stacks of speakers. That many Jesus must be a Santana concert. Okay? <laughs> so good old Carlos is sitting here on a stool playing his guitar and singing into a microphone on a stand. Now that's an ideal situation for feedback. Because the source that's going in here is going to come out of these speakers and go right back in again. So how do you fix that? Let's think it through. You know the answer to this. I, I want you to slowly think this through and then put up your hand. Move the talent. You need to start critically thinking with the information I'm giving you. You need to take these technical pieces of info, put them together, and get a one plus one equals three type scenario. So what's the answer? You could move the speakers in front of him or him behind, but if you know Santana, that ain't gonna happen. Because that's the way he likes to play. So now what? Type of mic he uses? I'll give you a hint. The answer is not in the speakers. It's in the microphone. What's left? Balance. It's in the microphone. The answer then must be in the microphone. What kind of, well, we assume it's balance of his professional show. What kind of microphone unidirectional picks up his, finally. The answer to that scenario is a unidirectional microphone. So that nothing on the side gets picked up at all. Tag team. And you move that mic very close to his mouth. Now by using unidirectional, not again, by using a unidirectional, it can only pick up right in front of his mouth if you use an omnidirectional microphone. It would pick up all around him. If you use a unidirectional microphone, it's going to pick up right where it's pointed. This is what I mean by critical thinking. Who came up with that? You two guys came up with that at about the same moment. Yeah? That is the correct answer. Great minds think alike. Um, but it is hyper important for you guys to be able to put, put this string of logic together, okay, to, to figure out this kind of stuff. Because when you get out there doing your own thing, there ain't nobody there to ask. Unless you got Reef in the truck with you, there's, there's nobody who's going to help you solve these problems. So you really need to be able to look at that and think it through. He would also have 
stage monitors was it would look like a wedge. He would also have some stage monitor monitors pointed this way. Even more important to use the unidirectional. See, with the stage monitor, so he can hear himself. Then, if we're talking about an omnidirectional, we would also pick those up. So the answer here is unidirectional. Next year, when you go to NAB, I want you to try various types of microphones. Put them on, actually wear them, and talk into them so that you can hear uh, what the difference in pickup patterns is. There's a company called Countryman. Countryman. I wouldn't mind it if you Googled them. They are always a big player at the NAB. Interestingly enough, it's a husband and wife engineering team who set out to make the best performance microphones on the planet. So you've heard of Shure, you've heard of Electro Voice, you've heard all these big names. You probably don't know about Countryman unless you are in the business. And they make, I mentioned this to you once before when we were talking about microphones. They're the ones who invented the microphone that's the size of a grain of rice. Now, let's say that your scenario is not Santana, but you're doing Phantom of the Opera. And you have uh, three lead singers on the stage all at the same time. The Phantom, the guy, and the girl. Okay, Christine and I forget all the characters. Phantom, Christine, and the guy. And they are all going to be singing at the same moment, so they all need their own microphones. What kind of microphone? are you going to pick for that situation? You Why? Because it's you can't, Obviously it can't, you know, if they're holding a microphone, it looks stupid. You can't use a handle. Handle. Lavalier is good. That's Where are you going to stick the lavalier? Um, the collar? No, no, the lapel. You could put it in their lapel. You, you could do that, and most people would. Except that location is going to get changed in a second once we figure out what type of microphone. So what's the pickup pattern now for this? Because for a live stage, the speakers are like they are in a movie theater. They're out in the audience. They're not on stage. You don't, you don't go see Phantom of the Opera and see the speaker stacked behind those guys. Those speakers are out in the audience. So what type of pickup pattern do we want here? Or hypercardial. Why? Narrow. What would be off the side that you want to pick up? Others. What are we trying to pick up here? The harmony. No. We're trying to pick up individual singers. We're trying to pick up the individual stars' voices. We're not trying to pick up the way the Phantom sounds with the girl. So again, you would use a highly directional lavalier microphone. Now, if you put a lavalier microphone on their collar, as you suggested, what can happen and often does is if that's highly directional and the microphone isn't put on right and starts pointing toward the floor instead of their mouth, now all you hear is their feet, not their voice. There are other problems with super directional microphones. This is why I want you to look at Countryman because their microphones, which are made for stage work, can come in a number of configurations, omnidirectional, hypercardioid, cardioid, or uh, omni. And you have to tell them which one you want. So next year when you go, I want you to try them all because we had this discussion with them. I said, in that scenario, what would you recommend? Because they do do the sound for Broadway. The answer is, as you said, a lavalier, but not clipped to their collar. It's too dangerous because their costume's going to make noise. So what they do is they bury it. Oh. Bury it. In their hair, they'll they'll bring it bring it because it's so small. They'll put it underneath their hairline and have it like right here. Sometimes they can do it with makeup and match the makeup so much that they bring it around a la Madonna style, right like this, right beside her mouth. Sometimes they'll put it here on the jawbone. The idea is you want to cover it up so people can, cannot see it or. It doesn't bring attention to itself. But the price you pay for that is that if it's cardioid or omnidirectional in any way, 
you're going to get massive feedback. So you use a unidirectional, a super unidirectional, so that it's only pointing at their mouth. So you're, you're at a point you're developing, you guys, where I really need you to you know, take the bits and pieces of techie stuff that you have, put them together, and come up with uh, technical solutions to aesthetic problems. Okay, uh, we have about a half an hour left. Let's uh, take five. Huh? Uh, it's a really nice uh, one, and it's chewable and everything. Kind of a stand alone. Would I plug that into the mic input or the line level? Which one? You only have two inputs, mic and line. Line. I have an omnidirectional microphone that's um, that's dynamic. What do I plug that into? Mic, mic, mic. I have a condenser microphone. <coughs> and it's going to require a battery, but I don't have one. Where do I plug that into? Mic. Mic input and phantom power on. Flip the phantom power on. I have a dynamic microphone, and I've already plugged it into the mic input, as you told me to do. What if I did that and forgot to turn off the phantom power? Rip feedback. It's going to burn up your voice coil. It's going to burn up that coil. Be careful about phantom power. That's why it always has a little light to tell you that it's on. So don't turn on the phantom power unless you really intend to use it. If you turn on phantom power with a dynamic mic, it is possible. It's not a slam dunk, but it is possible that you will send the electricity backwards through here, up into the voice coil, and burn out those little wires in there. So you probably don't want to do that. With a yeah. So you know the mixers, there's a power, and there's They're not labeled that way. No, you'll never see the word dynamic on the back of a mixer. Uh, all you'll see is mic level in, or mic in, or line in. Uh, so how do you know? It doesn't really matter. What you need to know is, am I using a condenser mic or not? If you're using a condenser, then usually the phantom power switch is on the back. Sometimes it is, but rarely. Most of the time now it's in the front, so that it gets your attention. They, they used years ago, I don't know about this one, but years ago they put it in the back, and because so many people were frying their microphones, they moved it up, up to the front. Um, Okay. This may not even happen. Okay, here's your mic, mic input, and here's your tape input, which is why. <coughs> let me see if anywhere on here there is phantom power available for us. No, this picture doesn't even have phantom power. That's a very old mixer. Uh, most modern mixers do have it. When you're calibrating your voice from the microphone or the music, at what level do you want your loudest piece? 80. Very good. Why? If it goes too much, it's going to cut off. If it goes above 100, it's going to cut off anything above 100 yeah. on the digital board. So you want to set it at about 80. For the same reason that on your waveform you want to set faces at about 80 because faces aren't white. So you never want to make a face turn white. Same reason you want to chop off some of your sound because you overmodulate the sound. Um, 
So on both areas, if you're working in the digital realm, you want to be very conservative on your levels. If it's analog, no. On an analog board, like ours, the Mackie, I told you I want you to calibrate that to 100% where it says level set, right to the 100% of the zero line. That's because it's an analog board. If you go above that, we're still okay. If that were a digital board, I would tell you to set your sound at 80%. At 80%. Same as your face. Set so your face as a piece. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to give you a few minutes right now to uh, review your notes from the whole, the whole class. <laughs> and then fire off any questions that are unclear or anything that you need uh, repeated. Provided it's not bonehead stuff. I mean, don't, you know, bonehead stuff. Like, what's AC and DC? Yeah, I haven't heard that in so long. Is, is, is a battery AC? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the last time I heard that was Ed 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 Can we go back to the, the percentage for um, white, for red, green, and blue? You didn't figure it out yet. Um, Somebody in this class got it right. I think it was, it was Tyler. Yeah, I think it, got it, it was right. Chris. Maybe you want to ask him again? Chris, you were the only person who got it. Your fate's in our hands. Our fate's in your hands. From what I remember, it was like two of them were around. Twenty percent and then one of them was like six. No, no, you're way off. Oh, we're going to go. Sixty-six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sixty-six. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Are we going to talk about analog and digital? It doesn't matter if we get why. It doesn't matter. Everybody wrote down 235, which is incorrect for all three. Like 90, okay, what 90. Is a, what is no. a per percentage of color? What is a percentage of red, percentage of green, yeah. percentage of blue? That's a good Yeah, one. video white. You might want to ask Google that right now. It's going to say 33 percent, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that was the right idea, but the wrong numbers. Isn't it 33? One of them is. One of them. Oh. 33 and 40. Red. No, no, you're guessing. You <laughs> oh, shit. Wait, aren't so are you the same mean? number? No, nope. they're the same percentage. <laughs> Definitely not. I know, I have a feeling that's going to be on the quarry test. Oh, this was <laughs> You gotta look amazing. Time to check the internet. The interweb. The interweb is. What does it say, Chris? I'll give you a hint. The dominant color is green. Damn. <laughs> Textbook. Anybody? No. This is a car. <laughs> I put it on the dashboard to get some sun. <laughs> what are you doing, Daddy? Why are you so juvenile? Wait. Go ahead. What? He used to be on the cover. Mm -hmm. um, on the cover. That's how important it is. You should stop. I'm so annoyed. I'm not the zoom zoom now. Oh, wait. That's all my coworkers play that game. Video white. Red. Like, you wouldn't like trying to kill that. You gotta look at me. 
Is it 64 for red, 32 for green, and then two blue? No, for green, green, is nope. the green, green is dominant. Green is dominant. By the way, it's the same proportion, uh, whether you're talking about uh, setting up a camera or whether you're setting up gels. If you have a red gel, a green gel, and a blue gel, where they intersect will come out white, provided that you use the same proportion. So it's, again, it's a pretty important number. Oh, shit. <laughs> what page? What page is that? What does this say? It's going to be a drive your phone to the Fun guys. <laughs> you're supposed to be scholars and you're asking me. We're asking the PhD doctor DJ Because you're too goddamn lazy to look it up. Find it for yourself. Now, now you're really it, Daniel. Now I'm really not going to tell you. You guys do have to look it up and find it on your own. DJ Spin off. Come on, Daniel. It's the 30. Shut up. Wait, wow. in your ear hole. I can't look it up. I don't have my book. Let me make a point. This is what I'm about to say. That's it's important. I'm in How many times have I told you to use your resources? Especially as students, you've got to use your resources. This is an engineering question. It's pretty fundamental. Where could you get an answer to an engineering question in a hurry? Glass engineer. You might want to ask the friggin' video engineer. Come on, you guys. Use your heads. Hey, Alvin, grass reef. <laughs> like, wait, I got a book. I'm going to ask Galen. Someone text Galen. Someone text Galen. All right. Now, you're supposed to be reviewing your notes. Oh. So, look look through, and besides red, green, and blue percentages, uh, find out anything else that you need to ask me about now for your study course. You won't see me again until we're, uh, you know, th until Thursday when we're doing the lab. So now's the time for the book stuff to ask me any questions you might have. Yes. Well, there was a question: Is the fields per frame? It's just two. Uh, two. Just make sure. Mm hmm. Which means, because of American electricity, which runs at 60 cycles per second, how many fields? Fields per second. You know it's 30 frames per second. So how many fields per frame? Two. Therefore, how many fields per second? 60. 60. 60. 60. Video is 30 frames per second and it takes two fields to make a frame. Then it must be 60 so frames per second. Field, no which, 30. It can't be one. coincidentally, but not coincidentally at all, is the number of cycles per second for U.S. power what's going on because yeah because remember interlace came way before progressive scan interlace was the original television signal and it had to match the electricity going on around. so way back when these standards were set that was the only form of electricity was 60 cycles per second therefore we're going to set our field rate at 60 cycles okay what else do you want to know we're going to get is there any questions in the video leader? On what? Video leader. Video meter? leader. 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 So like the, the, the lead into the uh, the mm -hmm. videos when Brock happens. Like color bars, tone, and all yeah. that. No, it's like yeah. 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 Not for this class. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll definitely need to know that for your capstone class, but not for this class.
What about the electricity? Well, I didn't say this was the only thing I just said no, name. The beginning of the class, oh, yeah. one of them was uh, the blue handle. Yeah. Toasters, Toasters, hair dryers, uh, microwave ovens, uh, anything that creates a big electrical field because it's using a lot of power. Well, I think yes. I got the percentage. You got it? I think so. So red is 60%, green is 90%, blue is 30%. Nope. That adds up to more than 100. You're fucking dumb. Go ahead. It's more than 100%. How do you do that? Extra strong. 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 Okay, you know what? You guys, use your own time to find that answer. You got plenty of time to do that. But we didn't have to find the answer. Look at your nose and ask me questions. You need, that's where your page is. Oh, very cool. Yes, sir. I had a question about the electricity. No. The, um, <coughs> are we, like the lights, when you plug it into the wall, right? Um, like what is the max that um, it can handle, basically? Okay. <coughs> you, know, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the answer to your own question. Yes. Now, we know that in an industrial building <laughs> like this, Building code calls for 18 amp circuits. Every right? every building. Well, every building built after 1998. So it's, I mean, it changes over the years. But it would be safe to assume that pretty much any commercial building is going to have 18 amps available to. You. Now, your question was, how big of a bulb can I plug in? If you use my quick and dirty formula, not the correct formula, which is watts equals volts times amps, but the quick and dirty, which is 100 watts equals 1 amp. Right? 100 watts equals 1 amp. How many amps did I say we had? 18. 18 amps. So what is the largest size bulb you could plug safely into an 18 amp circuit? 1800 watt bulb. Correct. That's it. Now that's why in the studio, all our circuits in the lighting grid are 20 amps. Because quite often, the light bulbs that get plugged into there are 800 or above. So we want to make sure that we can plug one at least safely into there, and usually two. So if you've got an 800 watt lamp, and you're plugging two Fresnels in, that's 1,600, but you've got 1,800 available to you, so it's safe. Go. Okay, so I think I got it. Really. <laughs> Freaking guy. This is the third time you think you got it. Yeah, no, this one, this one seems right, though. Okay, okay. so red is 30%. Yeah. Green is 60%. Yeah. And blue is 10%. Eh, 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 eh. You are extraordinarily close. Uh, but I will tell you this. Yeah. It's not that clean. Uh, it, it's It's... It's like a point. I'm gonna give you a real number. One of them is like light. It's like pi three. It's not uh, 10, 20, 100 watts equals one. Yeah. You understand why this is important? This is why we have a vector scope in a circle. What about that? If all the colors were two, four, six, eight, ten, or one, two, three, four, five, there would be no need for a vector scope. It would be a scale. The vector scope has to exist because the colors are not exact to each other. In other words, green is not two times red. Oh, oh, oh. That's, oh. I got it. Oh, okay. For real. Okay, so green is 71, red is 33, and blue is That's eight. over 100, bro. Eight? Eight. No. Uh, Mark, just You're just getting off. You're getting warmer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to your notes. What else do you need to know about? Take this seriously, you guys. Remember I told you when we started day one. This is the one course that has the highest failure rate of all the teachers. <coughs> this one. Let's make sure that doesn't happen. So hit, hit your notes. What else do you need to know about? So for the test, um, yeah. we're going to want us to study all the cables. So like even the ones that are not used to like the No. Again, you know, you ought to know me well enough to know I'm not going to ask you some obscure, bizarre. So XLR no, your XLRs. No, your XLRs. No, your VNCs. No, your genders. Male and female. And the temple? Those are not temple. Uh, USBs and your uh, now because it's so much used your uh, HDMI, okay. But don't don't worry about some bizarro you know 
Nintendo. Oh, he has two wires. <laughs> no, <I'm, I'm, laughs> no, you guys are struggling with the main points. Why would I go obscure on you? You're, you're having trouble with the main points. Okay, what else? <laughs> wait, wait. Cycles per second. You know, on that handout, there are a number of really important people, and you, I haven't asked you any questions on them. But, you know, in my other classes, like, you know, the question is, who are the Lumiere brothers? You ought to know who did most of the work with magnetic fields. Yeah, we did talk about it. And then you ought to know who did, who did most of the work with resistance and ohms. <coughs> and who did a lot of the work with amps. Because some of these things are named after the guys who worked with them. Which you don't. It's all in your blue sheet. <coughs> who did who who did, who did the the relationship between magnetism and electricity? Dutchman, Van Flying, Orsted, Flying Dutchman. Yeah. <coughs> so look these up. Okay, what else? For uh. Yes. I know where it goes, but I don't know how much. Uh, Fair question. Seventy-five ohms. Thank you. Seventy-five ohms. <laughs> there, there, there are different, different levels of resistance on the um, terminators. But eight times out of ten, it's going to be seventy-five. TV, cables, in studio are generally put away in what type of formation? Eight. Figure eights. Octopus. Uh, audio cables are generally stored in what type of? Coil. Coil. In in what type? Over, under. Over, under. Yeah. Over, under, over, under, <laughs> over, under. <laughs> what, was what kind of battery uh, should you have in your run bag? Nine gold. What else? Triple A. Triple A. You want double A, triple A, and nine gold. And run back. I will make the same offer to you I made uh, three weeks ago. If you want to bring in your uh, run bag on Thursday, uh, I'll I'll let you over and see what you're missing and what 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 my input is. If you want to bring your run bag on Thursday. How big you want to put stuff in? I mean, it's you know, uh, I I prefer smaller is better. Uh, you know, like they show in the movies, an old doctor's bag. You see the doctor walking around about that size. You know, it's not, oh. yeah, not you. The ideal one is the one I recommended to you guys. You should have gone for um, whatever the last holiday was. Is there another holiday coming up? Uh, Father's Day. Yeah, Fastein. Get your butt down the stairs. And they'll have a two for one on the Craftsman black and red bags. They'll have a, a relatively large one. I think it's an 18 inch paired with a uh, 13 inch for like eleven dollars. <coughs> go get that because <coughs> nobody comes even close. If you go to Home Depot, their uh, Dewalt bags and their other ones are way more than that. They're like thirty, forty, fifty dollars. You can't beat those Sears. Bags when they're on sale for two for eleven. That's like killers. So, and they're perfect. They're perfect size. They're very sturdy. Uh, you may or may not know anything you buy in the tool department at Sears is guaranteed for life. So or until they put a wrench that starts getting hinky on you, or you break a screwdriver handle, you take four. it back. No questions asked. They hand you the one. Or until they go. Out of Sears big claim to fame. That's only in the tool department. Aren't they going back? They are going back. That's probably why. Who's they never bought Kmart. <laughs> no question. That's Father of TV? They bought Kmart. That was their big downfall. <laughs> Father, okay. of, Father of television? Pardon? Father of television? <laughs> <laughs> ah! It's not on the test, but it's something good to know. Hmm. Who invented television? Marlo 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 I should say, who invented electronic television? Thomas Edison. Philo T. Farnsworth. 
Who invented mechanical television where they had spinning Luke wings? Skywalker. <laughs> Ooh. John Logie Baird. B A R D. The Scotsman. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it. They were competing at one time. You want to try one more time? I would try this one. All right, one So, red is 30.2%. Oh. Yeah. Well, Green is 61.3%. Uh, and blue is 8.5%. You are enormously close to <laughs> <with> no cigar. <laughs> okay, kids. <laughs> I've been looking that up for 30 minutes. Though. Showtime. We're done with you for today. <laughs> So Thursday, last chance, you damn well be ready to do the performance on this. <coughs> and if you want me to check it, bring your run back so I'll take a look inside. Okay? That's it, that's all. We'll see you Thursday. That's it, that's all. Damn. So uh, when you're about to leave, you might mind. For the, for the study group at your house. For the study group at your house. Huh? Wait, what? Study group in my house at six. Can you tell me when you, before you leave? So, um, it's gonna be a six, Bobby. Six. I work at seven. Yeah, I can come at night. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, I think we'd be done by then. What? How fast is it gonna be? Bro, it's good to have school tomorrow, bro. Did that have school? Do you have some family? Are you doing it? Oh, yeah. Tell me when you're about to leave. So, like, um, or if you're gonna leave. Well, I gotta leave. I gotta leave at two thirty. Go pick up my kids. Oh, okay. What are you all up to? So is there going to be a study session? Yeah, study group from my side. All right, around. Can somebody o'clock. pick me up from hey. here? Can somebody be here? I can get it from here. I'll send it. To okay. I'll send it online. Just, just call me on. Are you sure? Because like, we've, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've done this. No, no. Before, this, is and, like, this is coming on my my house again. Like, there have been plenty of times where like we plan to do study groups, but I never get the advice. Yeah, yeah. Glass. You got a book and it's got all the colored circles in the back. He's looking for it too. Yeah, I'll see you. Sure. Uh, I have one coming in at 1.30. But you didn't have it until then. Sure. Okay. 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 I'm trying to get a read. Come on, it's not a it's not even your name. I was just going to ask you. I got it in my head. I'll text it. But there's only one for it. Please make sure. No, no, it's not. But obviously, this is the case. Because nobody... I don't know, I'm about to, I'll, I'll send it out online. I'm not okay. you don't have to see you guys until then. <laughs> <laughs> Come on.